The 2011 earthquake off the Pacific coast of Tohoku, Dongbei de Fang Taiping Yang Chang de Gen Tohoku Chiho Taihio Oki Jishin was a magnitude 9.0 to 9.1 MW undersea megathrust earthquake off the coast of Japan that occurred at 1446 JST, 546 Coordinated Universal Time on Friday, the 11th of March 2011, with the epicenter approximately 70 kilometers 43 miles. East of the Oshika Peninsula of Tohoku and the hypocenter at an underwater depth of approximately 29 kilometers 18 miles. The earthquake is often referred to in Japan as the Great East Japan Earthquake, Dongri Ben Da Genzai Higashi Nihon Daishinsai, and is also known as the 2011 Tohoku Earthquake, the Great Sendai Earthquake, the Great Tohoku Earthquake, and the 3.11 Earthquake. It was the most powerful earthquake ever recorded in Japan, and the fourth most powerful earthquake in the world since modern record-keeping began in 1900. The earthquake triggered powerful tsunami waves that may have reached heights of up to 40.5 meters 133 feet in Miyako in Tohoku's Iwate Prefecture, and which, in the Sendai area, traveled at 435 miles per hour for up to 10 kilometers 6 miles inland. Residents of Sendai had only 8 to 10 minutes warning, and more than 19,000 were killed, many at the more than a hundred evacuation sites that washed away. The earthquake moved Honshu, the main island of Japan, 2.4 meters 8 feet east, shifted the earth on its axis by estimates of between 10 centimeters 4 in and 25 centimeters 10 in, increased Earth's rotational speed by 1.8 microseconds per day, and generated infrasound waves to detected in perturbations of the low-orbiting GOCE satellite. Initially, the earthquake caused sinking of part of Honshu's Pacific coast by up to roughly a meter, but after about three years, the coast rose back and kept on rising to exceed its original height. The tsunami swept the Japanese mainland and killed over 10,000 people, mainly through drowning, though blunt trauma also caused many deaths. The latest report from the Japanese National Police Agency report confirms 15,897 deaths, 6,157 injured, and 2,533 people missing across 20 prefectures, and a report from 2015 indicated 228,863 people were still living away from their home in either temporary housing or due to permanent relocation, a report by the National Police Agency of Japan on 10 September 2018 listed 121,778 buildings as total collapsed, with a further 280,926 buildings half collapsed, and another 699,180 buildings partially damaged. The earthquake and tsunami also caused extensive and severe structural damage in northeastern Japan, including heavy damage to roads and railways as well as fires in many areas, and a dam collapse. Japanese Prime Minister Naoto Kan said, In the 65 years after the end of World War II, this is the toughest and the most difficult crisis for Japan. Around 4.4 million households in northeastern Japan were left without electricity and 1.5 million without water. The tsunami caused nuclear accidents, primarily the level 7 meltdowns at three reactors in the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant complex, and the associated evacuation zones affecting hundreds of thousands of residents. Many electrical generators were taken down, and at least three nuclear reactors suffered explosions due to hydrogen gas that had built up within their outer containment buildings after cooling system failure resulting from the loss of electrical power. Residents within a 20 kilometers 12 miles radius of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant and a 10 kilometers 6.2 miles radius of the Fukushima Daini nuclear power plant were evacuated. Early estimates placed insured losses from the earthquake alone at 14 United States dollars and 50 cents to 34.6 billion dollars. The Bank of Japan offered 15 trillion yen, 183 billion United States dollars to the banking system on the 14th of March in an effort to normalize market conditions. 
The World Bank's estimated economic cost was US$235 billion, making it the costliest natural disaster in history. Earthquake <inaudible> 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 The 9.1 magnitude MW undersea megathrust earthquake occurred on the 11th of March 2011 at 1446 JST, 546 coordinated universal time in the northwestern Pacific Ocean at a relatively shallow depth of 32 kilometers, 20 miles, with its epicenter approximately 72 kilometers, 45 miles east of the Oshika Peninsula of Tohoku, Japan, lasting approximately 6 minutes. The earthquake was initially reported as 7.9 MW by the USGS before it was quickly upgraded to 8.8 .8 MW, then to 8.9 MW, and then finally to 9.0 MW. On the 11th of July 2016, the USGS further upgraded the earthquake to 9.1. Sendai was the nearest major city to the earthquake, 130 kilometers 81 miles from the epicenter. The earthquake occurred 373 kilometers 232 miles from Tokyo. The main earthquake was preceded by a number of large foreshocks, with hundreds of aftershocks reported. One of the first major foreshocks was a 7.2 MW event on the 9th of March, approximately 40 kilometers (25 miles) from the epicenter of the 11th of March earthquake, with another three on the same day in excess of 6.0 MW. Following the main earthquake on the 11th of March, a 7.4 MW aftershock was reported at 15:08 JST, 6:06 Coordinated Universal Time, succeeded by a 7.9 MW at 15:15 JST, 6:16 Coordinated Universal Time, and a 7.7 MW at 15:26 JST, 6:26 Coordinated Universal Time. Over 800 aftershocks of magnitude 4.5 MW or greater have occurred since the initial quake, including one on the 26th of October 2013 local time of magnitude 7.1 MW. Aftershocks follow Omori's law, which states that the rate of aftershocks declines with the reciprocal of the time since the main quake. The aftershocks will thus taper off in time, but could continue for years. Geology This megathrust earthquake was a recurrence of the mechanism of the earlier 869 Sanriku earthquake, which has been estimated as having a magnitude of at least 8.4 MW, which also created a large tsunami that inundated the Sendai Plain. Three tsunami deposits have been identified within the Holocene sequence of the plain, all formed within the last 3,000 years, suggesting an 800 to 1,100 year recurrence interval for large tsunamogenic earthquakes. In 2001 it was reckoned that there was a high likelihood of a large tsunami hitting the Sendai plain as more than 1,100 years had then elapsed. In 2007, the probability of an earthquake with a magnitude of MW 8.1 to 8.3 was estimated as 99% within the following 30 years. This earthquake occurred where the Pacific Plate is subducting under the plate beneath northern Honshu. The Pacific Plate, which moves at a rate of 8 to 9 cm per year, dips under Honshu's underlying plate, building large amounts of elastic energy. This motion pushes the upper plate down until the accumulated stress causes a seismic slip rupture event. The break caused the sea floor to rise by several meters. A quake of this magnitude usually has a rupture length of at least 500 kilometers (310 miles) and generally requires a long, relatively straight fault surface. Because the plate boundary and subduction zone in the area of the Honshu rupture is not very straight, it is unusual for the magnitude of its earthquake to exceed 8.5 MW. The magnitude of this earthquake was a surprise to some seismologists. The hypocentral region of this earthquake extended from offshore Iwate Prefecture to offshore Ibaraki Prefecture. 
The Japanese Meteorological Agency said that the earthquake may have ruptured the fault zone from Iwate to Ibaraki with a length of 500 km and a width of 200 km Analysis showed that this earthquake consisted of a set of three events. Other major earthquakes with tsunamis struck the Sanriku coast region in 1896 and in 1933. The source area of this earthquake has a relatively high coupling coefficient surrounded by areas of relatively low coupling coefficients in the west, north, and south. From the averaged coupling coefficient of 0.5 to 0.8 in the source area and the seismic moment, it was estimated that the slip deficit of this earthquake was accumulated over a period of 260 to 880 years, which is consistent with the recurrence interval of such great earthquakes estimated from the tsunami deposit data. The seismic moment of this earthquake accounts for about 93% of the estimated cumulative moment from 1926 to March 2011. Hence, earthquakes with magnitudes about 7 since 1926 in this area only had released part of the accumulated energy. In the area near the trench, the coupling coefficient is high, which could act as the source of the large tsunami. Most of the foreshocks are interplate earthquakes with thrust type focal mechanisms. Both interplate and intraplate earthquakes appeared in the aftershocks offshore Sanriku coast with considerable proportions. The strong ground motion registered at the maximum of 7 on the Japan Meteorological Agency seismic intensity scale in Kurihara, Miyagi Prefecture. Three other prefectures — Fukushima, Ibaraki and Tochigi — recorded an upper six on the JMA scale. Seismic stations in Iwate, Gunma, Saitama and Chiba prefecture measured a lower six, recording an upper five in Tokyo. In Russia, the main shock could be felt in Yuzno Sokolinsk MSK4 and Kurls MSK4. The aftershock at 6:25 coordinated universal time could be felt in Yuzno Curls MSK5 and Curls MSK4. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Energy. The surface energy of the seismic waves from the earthquake was calculated to be at 1.9 times 1017 joules, which is nearly double that of the 9.1 MW 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami that killed 230,000 people. If harnessed, the seismic energy from this earthquake would power a city the size of Los Angeles for an entire year. The seismic moment MO, which represents a physical size for the event, was calculated by the USGS at 3.9 times 1022 joules, slightly less than the 2004 Indian Ocean quake. Japan's National Research Institute for Earth Science and Disaster Prevention need calculated a peak ground acceleration of 2.99 grams, 29.33 meters per square second. The largest individual recording in Japan was 2.7 grams. In Miyagi Prefecture, 75 kilometers from the epicenter, the highest reading in the Tokyo metropolitan area was 0.16 grams. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Geophysical effects. Portions of northeastern Japan shifted by as much as 2.4 meters 7 feet 10 in closer to North America, making some sections of Japan's landmass wider than before. Those areas of Japan closest to the epicenter experienced the largest shifts. A 400-kilometer stretch of coastline dropped vertically by 0.6 meters 2 feet 0 in, allowing the tsunami to travel farther and faster onto land. One early estimate suggested that the Pacific Plate may have moved westward by up to 20 meters 66 feet, and another early estimate put the amount of slippage at as much as 40 meters 130 feet. On 6 April the Japanese Coast Guard said that the quake shifted the seabed near the epicenter 24 meters 79 feet and elevated the seabed off the coast of Miyagi Prefecture by 3 meters 9.8 feet. 
A report by the Japan Agency for Marine Earth Science and Technology, published in Science on 2 December 2011, concluded that the seabed in the area between the epicenter and the Japan Trench moved 50 meters east-southeast and rose about 7 meters as a result of the quake. The report also stated that the quake had caused several major landslides on the seabed in the affected area. The Earth's axis shifted by estimates of between 10 cm and 25 cm This deviation led to a number of small planetary changes, including the length of a day, the tilt of the Earth, and the Chandler wobble. The speed of the Earth's rotation increased, shortening the day by 1.8 microseconds due to the redistribution of Earth's mass. The axial shift was caused by the redistribution of mass on the Earth's surface, which changed the planet's moment of inertia. Because of conservation of angular momentum, such changes of inertia result in small changes to the Earth's rate of rotation. These are expected changes for an earthquake of this magnitude. The earthquake also generated infrasound waves detected by perturbations in the orbit of the GOCE satellite, which thus serendipitously became the first seismograph in orbit. Soil liquefaction was evident in areas of reclaimed land around Tokyo, particularly in Urayasu, Chiba City, Funabashi, Narashino, all in Chiba Prefecture, and in the Koto, Etagawa, Minato, Chuo, and Oda wards of Tokyo. Approximately 30 homes or buildings were destroyed and 1,046 other buildings were damaged to varying degrees. Nearby Haneda Airport, built mostly on reclaimed land, was not damaged. Odaiba also experienced liquefaction, but damage was minimal. Shinmodaki, a volcano in Kyushu, erupted three days after the earthquake. The volcano had previously erupted in January 2011, it is not known if the later eruption was linked to the earthquake. In Antarctica, the seismic waves from the earthquake were reported to have caused the Willens ice stream to slip by about 0.5 meters 1 foot 8 in. The first sign international researchers had that the earthquake caused such a dramatic change in the Earth's rotation came from the United States Geological Survey which monitors Global Positioning Satellite GPS stations across the world. The survey team had several GPS monitors located near the scene of the earthquake. The GPS station located nearest the epicenter moved almost 4 meters 13 feet. This motivated government researchers to look into other ways the earthquake may have had large-scale effects on the planet. Calculations at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory determined that the Earth's rotation was changed by the earthquake to the point where the days are now 1.8 microseconds shorter. Topic. Aftershocks. Japan experienced over 1,000 aftershocks since the earthquake, with 80 registering over magnitude 6.0 MW and several of which have been over magnitude 7.0 MW. A magnitude 7.4 MW at 15.08 JST, 7.9 MW at 15.15 and a 7.7 .7 MW quake at 15.26 all occurred on of March. A month later, a major aftershock struck offshore on 7 April with a magnitude of 7.1 MW. Its epicenter was underwater, 66 kilometers 41 miles off the coast of Sendai. The Japan Meteorological Agency assigned a magnitude of 7.4 MJMA, while the U.S. Geological Survey lowered it to 7.1 MW. At least four people were killed, and electricity was cut off across much of northern Japan including the loss of external power to Higashidori Nuclear Power Plant and Rakasho Reprocessing Plant. Four days later on the 11th of April, another magnitude 7.1 MW aftershock struck Fukushima, causing additional damage and killing a total of three people. On 7 December 2012 a large aftershock of magnitude 7.3 MW 
W caused a minor tsunami, and again on 26 October 2013 small tsunami waves were recorded after a 7.1 MW aftershock. As of 16 March 2012 aftershocks continued, totaling 1887 events over magnitude 4.0, a regularly updated map showing all shocks of magnitude 4.5 and above near or off the east coast of Honshu in the last seven days showed over 20 events. As of the 11th of March 2016, there had been 869 aftershocks of 5.0 MW or greater, 118 of 6.0 MW or greater, and 9 over 7.0 MW, as reported by the Japanese Meteorological Agency. The number of aftershocks was associated with decreased health across Japan. Earthquake warning system One minute before the earthquake was felt in Tokyo, the earthquake early warning system, which includes more than 1,000 seismometers in Japan, sent out warnings of impending strong shaking to millions. It is believed that the early warning by the Japan Meteorological Agency JMA saved many lives. The warning for the general public was delivered about 8 seconds after the first P wave was detected, or about 31 seconds after the earthquake occurred. However, the estimated intensities were smaller than the actual ones in some places, especially in Kanto, Koshinetsu, and northern Tohoku regions where the populace warning did not trigger. According to the JMA Meteorological Research Institute, reasons for the underestimation include a saturated magnitude scale when using maximum amplitude as input, failure to fully take into account the area of the hypocenter, and the initial amplitude of the earthquake being less than that which would be predicted by an empirical relationship. There were also cases where large differences between estimated intensities by the earthquake early warning system and the actual intensities occurred in the aftershocks and triggered earthquakes. Such discrepancies in the warning were attributed by the JMA to the system's inability to distinguish between two different earthquakes that happened at around the same time, as well as to the reduced number of reporting seismometers due to power outages and connection fails. The system's software was subsequently modified to handle this kind of situation. Topic. Tsunami An upthrust of 6 to 8 meters 20 to 26 feet along a 180 kilometers 110 miles wide seabed at 60 kilometers 37 miles offshore from the east coast of Tohoku resulted in a major tsunami that brought destruction along the Pacific coastline of Japan's northern islands. Thousands of lives were lost and entire towns were devastated. The tsunami propagated throughout the Pacific Ocean region reaching the entire Pacific coast of North and South America from Alaska to Chile. Warnings were issued and evacuations were carried out in many countries bordering the Pacific. Although the tsunami affected many of these places, the heights of the waves were minor. Chile's Pacific coast, one of the furthest from Japan at about 17,000 kilometers 11,000 miles away, was struck by waves 2 meters 6.6 .6 feet high, compared with an estimated wave height of 38.9 meters 128 feet at Omo Peninsula, Miyako City, Japan. Topic. Japan. The tsunami warning issued by the Japan Meteorological Agency was the most serious on its warning scale. It was rated as a major tsunami, being at least 3 meters (9.8 feet) high. The actual height prediction varied, the greatest being for Miyagi at 6 meters (20 feet) high. The tsunami inundated a total area of approximately 561 square kilometers, 217 square miles in Japan. 
The earthquake took place at 1446 JST UTC 546 around 67 kilometers 42 miles from the nearest point on Japan's coastline and initial estimates indicated the tsunami would have taken 10 to 30 minutes to reach the areas first affected and then areas farther north and south based on the geography of the coastline just over an hour after the earthquake at 1555 JST, a tsunami was observed flooding Sendai Airport, which is located near the coast of Miyagi Prefecture, with waves sweeping away cars and planes and flooding various buildings as they traveled inland. The impact of the tsunami in and around Sendai Airport was filmed by an NHK News helicopter, showing a number of vehicles on local roads trying to escape the approaching wave and being engulfed by it. A 4-meter-high tsunami hit Iwate Prefecture. Wakabayashi Ward in Sendai was also particularly hard hit. At least 101 designated tsunami evacuation sites were hit by the wave. Like the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami, the damage by surging water, though much more localized, was far more deadly and destructive than the actual quake. Entire towns were destroyed in tsunami hit areas in Japan, including 9,500 missing in Minamisanriku. 1,000 bodies had been recovered in the town by 14 March 2011. Among the factors in the high death toll was the unexpectedly large water surge. The sea walls in several cities had been built to protect against tsunamis of much lower heights. Also, many people caught in the tsunami thought they were high enough ground to be safe. According to a special committee on disaster prevention designated by the Japanese government, the tsunami protection policy had been intended to deal with only tsunamis that had been scientifically proved to occur repeatedly. The committee advised that future policy should be to protect against the highest possible tsunami. Because tsunami walls had been overtopped, the committee also suggested, besides building taller tsunami walls, also teaching citizens how to evacuate if a large-scale tsunami should strike. Large parts of Kuji and the southern section of Ofunato including the port area were almost entirely destroyed. Also largely destroyed was Rikuzantakata, where the tsunami was three stories high. Other cities destroyed or heavily damaged by the tsunami include Kamaishi, Miyako, Atsuchi, and Yamada in Iwate Prefecture, Naimi, Soma, and Minamasoma in Fukushima Prefecture and Shishigahama, Higashimatsushima, Onagawa, Natori, Ishinomaki, and Keisanuma in Miyagi Prefecture. The most severe effects of the tsunami were felt along a 670-kilometer-long stretch of coastline from Aramo, Hokkaido, in the north to Orai, Ibaraki, in the south, with most of the destruction in that area occurring in the hour following the earthquake. Near Orai, people captured images of a huge whirlpool that had been generated by the tsunami. The tsunami washed away the sole bridge to Miyatajima, Miyagi, isolating the island's 900 residents. A 2 meters 6 feet 7 in high tsunami hit Chiba Prefecture about two and a half hours after the quake, causing heavy damage to cities such as Asahi. On 13 March 2011, the Japan Meteorological Agency JMA published details of tsunami observations recorded around the coastline of Japan following the earthquake. These observations included tsunami maximum readings of over 3 meters (9.8 feet) at the following locations and times on the 11th of March 2011, following the earthquake at 1446 JST. 1512 JST off Kamaishi 6.8 meters (22 feet). 1515 JST Ofunato 3.2 meters (10 feet) or higher. 1520 JST, Ishinomaki Shi Ayakawa 3.3 meters 11 feet or higher. 1521 JST, Miyako 4 meters 13 feet or higher. 1521 JST, Kamaishi 4.1 meters 13 feet or higher. 1544 JST, Aramocho Shoya 3.5 meters 11 feet. 
1550 JST, Soma 7.3 m 24 feet or higher. 1652 JST Ori 4.2 meters 14 feet many areas were also affected by waves of 1 to 3 meters 3 feet 3 into 9 feet 10 in in height and the JMA bulletin also included the caveat that at some parts of the coasts tsunamis may be higher than those observed at the observation sites the timing of the earliest recorded tsunami maximum readings ranged from 1512 to 1521, between 26 and 35 minutes after the earthquake had struck. The bulletin also included initial tsunami observation details, as well as more detailed maps for the coastlines affected by the tsunami waves. JMA also reported offshore tsunami height recorded by telemetry from moored GPS wave height meter buoys as follows. Offshore of central Iwate, Miyako, 6.3 meters, 21 feet. Offshore of northern Iwate, Kuji, 6 meters, 20 feet. Offshore of northern Miyagi, Kaisenuma, 6 meters, 20 feet. On the 25th of March 2011, Port and Airport Research Institute, Perai, reported tsunami height by visiting the port sites as follows. Port of Hachinohe 5 to 6 meters 16 to 20 feet Port of Hachinohe area 8 to 9 meters 26 to 30 feet Port of Kuji 8 to 9 meters 26 to 30 feet Port of Kamaishi 7 to 9 meters 23 to 30 feet Port of Ofunato 9.5 meters 31 feet Run up height, port of Ofunato area 24 meters, 79 feet. Fishery port of Onagawa 15 meters, 49 feet. Port of Ishinomaki 5 meters, 16 feet. Shiagama section of Shiagama Sendai port 4 meters, 13 feet. Sendai section of Shiagama Sendai port 8 meters, 26 feet. Sendai Airport area 12 meters 39 feet the tsunami at Ryori Bay Lingli Wan Ofunato reached a height of 40.1 meters 132 feet run up elevation fishing equipment was scattered on the high cliff above the bay at Taro Iwate the tsunami reached a height of 37.9 meters 124 feet up the slope of a mountain some 200 meters 660 feet away from the coastline also, at the slope of a nearby mountain from 400 meters 1,300 feet away at Anayoshi Fishery Port ZGU Gang of Omo Peninsula Zhang Mao Ban Dao in Miyako, Iwate, Tokyo University of Marine Science and Technology found estimated tsunami run-up height of 38.9 meters 128 feet. This height is deemed the record in Japan historically, as of reporting date, that exceeds 38.2 meters 125 feet from the 1896 Meiji Sanriku earthquake. It was also estimated that the tsunami reached heights of up to 40.5 meters 133 feet in Miyako in Tohoku's Iwate Prefecture. The inundated areas closely matched those of the 869 Sanriku tsunami. A Japanese government study found that 58% of people in coastal areas in Iwate, Miyagi, and Fukushima prefectures heeded tsunami warnings immediately after the quake and headed for higher ground. Of those who attempted to evacuate after hearing the warning, only 5% were caught in the tsunami. Of those who didn't heed the warning, 49% were hit by the water. Delayed evacuations in response to the warnings had a number of causes. The tsunami height that had been initially predicted by the tsunami warning system was lower than the actual tsunami height. This error contributed to the delayed escape of some residents. The discrepancy arose as follows, in order to produce a quick prediction of a tsunami's height and thus to provide a timely warning, the initial earthquake and tsunami warning that was issued for the event was based on a calculation that requires only about three minutes. This calculation is, in turn, based on the maximum amplitude of the seismic wave. The amplitude of the seismic wave is measured using the JMA magnitude scale, which is similar to Richter magnitude scale. However, these scales saturate 
For earthquakes that are above a certain magnitude magnitude 8 on the JMA scale, that is, in the case of very large earthquakes, the scale's values change little despite large differences in the earthquake's energy. This resulted in an underestimation of the tsunami's height in initial reports. Problems in issuing updates also contributed to delays in evacuations. The warning system was supposed to be updated about 15 minutes after the earthquake occurred, by which time the calculation for the moment magnitude scale would normally be completed. However, the strong quake had exceeded the measurement limit of all of the teleseismometers within Japan, and thus it was impossible to calculate the moment magnitude based on data from those seismometers. Another cause of delayed evacuations was the release of the second update on the tsunami warning long after the earthquake 28 minutes, according to observations, by that time, power failures and similar circumstances reportedly prevented the update from reaching some residents. Also, observed data from tidal meters that were located off the coast were not fully reflected in the second warning. Furthermore, shortly after the earthquake, some wave meters reported a fluctuation of 20 cm and this value was broadcast throughout the mass media and the warning system, which caused some residents to underestimate the danger of their situation and even delayed or suspended their evacuation. In response to the aforementioned shortcomings in the tsunami warning system, JMA began an investigation in 2011 and updated their system in 2013. In the updated system, for a powerful earthquake that is capable of causing the JMA magnitude scale to saturate, no quantitative prediction will be released in the initial warning, instead, there will be words that describe the situation's emergency. There are plans to install new teleseismometers with the ability to measure larger earthquakes, which would allow the calculation of a quake's moment magnitude scale in a timely manner. JMA also implemented a simpler empirical method to integrate, into a tsunami warning, data from GPS tidal meters as well as from undersea water pressure meters, and there are plans to install more of these meters and to develop further technology to utilize data observed by them. To prevent under-reporting of tsunami heights, early quantitative observation data that are smaller than the expected amplitude will be overridden and the public will instead be told that the situation is under observation. About 90 seconds after an earthquake, an additional report on the possibility of a tsunami will also be included in observation reports, in order to warn people before the JMA magnitude can be calculated. Topic. Elsewhere across the Pacific Shortly after the earthquake, the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center PTWC in Hawaii issued tsunami watches and announcements for locations in the Pacific. At 7.30 Coordinated Universal Time, PTWC issued a widespread tsunami warning covering the entire Pacific Ocean. Russia evacuated 11,000 residents from coastal areas of the Kuril Islands. The United States National Tsunami Warning Center issued a tsunami warning for the coastal areas in most of California, all of Oregon, and the western part of Alaska, and a tsunami advisory covering the Pacific coastlines of most of Alaska, and all of Washington and British Columbia, Canada. In California and Oregon, up to 2.4 m high (7.9 feet) tsunami surges hit some areas, damaging docks and harbors and causing over 10 million United States dollars in damage. In Curry County, Oregon, 7 million United States dollars in damage occurred including the destruction of 1,100 meters (3,600 feet) of docks at the Brookings Harbor. The county has received over 1 million United States dollars in FEMA emergency grants from the US federal government. Surges of up to 1 meter (3 feet 3 in) hit Vancouver Island in Canada, prompting some evacuations and causing boats to be banned from the waters surrounding the island for 12 hours following the wave strike, leaving many island residents in the area without means of getting to work. In the Philippines, waves up to 0.5 meters (1 foot 8 in) high hit the eastern seaboard of the country. Some houses along the coast in Jayapura, Indonesia were destroyed. 
Authorities in Wewak, East Sepik, Papua New Guinea evacuated 100 patients from the city's Borom Hospital before it was hit by the waves, causing an estimated US$4 million in damage. Hawaii estimated damage to public infrastructure alone at US$3 million, with damage to private properties, including resort hotels such as Four Seasons Resort Hualalai, estimated at tens of millions of dollars. It was reported that a 1.5 m high feet wave completely submerged Midway Atoll's reef inlets and Spit Island, killing more than 110,000 nesting seabirds at the Midway Atoll National Wildlife Refuge. Some other South Pacific countries, including Tonga and New Zealand, and U.S. territories American Samoa and Guam, experienced larger than normal waves, but did not report any major damage. However, in Guam some roads were closed off and people were evacuated from low-lying areas. Along the Pacific coast of Mexico and South America, tsunami surges were reported, but in most places caused little or no damage. Peru reported a wave of 1.5 meters 4 feet 11 in and more than 300 homes damaged. The surge in Chile was large enough to damage more than 200 houses, with waves of up to 3 meters 9.8 feet. In the Galapagos Islands, 260 families received assistance following a 3 meters 9.8 feet surge which arrived 20 hours after the earthquake, after the tsunami warning had been lifted. There was a great deal of damage to buildings on the islands and one man was injured but there were no reported fatalities. After a 2 meters 6 feet 7 in high surge hit Chile, it was reported that the reflection from those surges traveled back across the Pacific, causing a 30 to 60 centimeters 12 to 24 in surge in Japan, 47 to 48 hours after the earthquake, according to observation from multiple tide stations, including in Onohama, Awase, and Kushimoto, the tsunami broke icebergs off the Salzburger Ice Shelf in Antarctica, 13,000 kilometers 8,100 miles away. The main iceberg measured 9.5 kilometers times 6.5 kilometers, 5.9 miles times 4.0 miles, approximately the area of Manhattan Island and about 80 meters 260 feet thick. A total of 125 square kilometers, 48 square miles, 31,000 acres of ice broke away. As of April 2012, wreckage from the tsunami spread around the world, including a soccer ball which was found in Alaska's Middleton Island and a Japanese motorcycle found in British Columbia, Canada. Topic: <laughs> Land subsidence. The Geospatial Information Authority of Japan reported land subsidence based on the height of triangulation stations in the area measured by GPS as compared to their previous values from 14 April 2011. Miyako, Iwate 0.50 meters 1 foot 8 in. Yamada, Iwate 0.53 meters 1 foot 9 in. Atsuchi, Iwate 0.35 meters, 1 foot 2 in. Kamaishi, Iwate 0.66 meters, 2 feet 2 in. Ofunato, Iwate 0.73 meters, 2 feet 5 in. Rikuzintakata, Iwate 0.84 meters, 2 feet 9 in. Kesanuma, Miyagi 0.74 meters, 2 feet 5 in. Minamisanriku, Miyagi 0.69 meters 2 feet 3 in. Oshika Peninsula, Miyagi 1.2 meters 3 feet 11 in. Ishinomaki, Miyagi 0.78 meters 2 feet 7 in. Higashimatsushima, Miyagi 0.43 meters 1 foot 5 in. Iwanuma, Miyagi 0.47 meters 1 foot 7 in. Soma, Fukushima 0.29 meters 11 in scientists say that the subsidence is permanent. As a result, the communities in question are now more susceptible to flooding during high tides. <laughs> 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 
Topic: Casualties. Topic: Japan. In Japan, the National Police Agency has confirmed 15,897 deaths, 6,157 injured, and 2,533 people missing across 20 prefectures. In addition, some 3,000s extra deaths have been identified as earthquake-related deaths. Bringing the total number of deaths caused by the disaster to 19,575 as of 2017 September, of the 13,135 fatalities recovered by the 11th of April 2011, 12,143 or 92.5% died by drowning. Victims aged 60 or older accounted for 65.2% of the deaths, with 24% of total victims being in their 70s. As of March 2012, Japanese police data showed that 70% of the 3,279 still missing were aged 60 or over, all found, including 893 in their 70s and 577 in their 80s. Of the total confirmed victims, 14,308 drowned, 667 were crushed to death or died from internal injuries, and 145 perished from burns. Earthquake-related death is defined as cases where the earthquake did not directly kill those people, however it act as a contributory factor that indirectly caused their death, for the purpose of relief fund distribution. Some of the most widely reported reason for these deaths include physical and mental fatigue caused by life in temporary shelter, physical and mental fatigue caused by evacuation, Delayed treatment due to the inoperative of hospital. Physical and mental fatigue caused by stress from the earthquake and tsunami. A few cases of suicide are also included. Most of these deaths occurred during the first six months after the earthquake and the number dropped thereafter, but as time has passed, the number has continued to increase. Most of these deaths occurred in Fukushima Prefecture, where the prefecture government has suggested that they could be due to evacuations caused by the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster. These indirect casualties have already resulted in more deaths than the number of people killed directly by earthquake and tsunami within the Fukushima prefecture. Save the Children reports that as many as 100,000 children were uprooted from their homes, some of whom were separated from their families because the earthquake occurred during the school day. 236 children were orphaned in the prefectures of Iwate, Miyagi and Fukushima by the disaster, 1,580 children lost either one or both parents, 846 in Miyagi, 572 in Iwate, and 162 in Fukushima. The quake and tsunami killed 378 elementary, middle school, and high school students and left 158 others missing. One elementary school in Ishinomaki, Miyagi, Okawa Elementary, lost 74 of 108 students and 10 of 13 teachers and staff. The Japanese Foreign Ministry has confirmed the deaths of 19 foreigners. Among them are two English teachers from the United States affiliated with the Japan Exchange and Teaching Program, a Canadian missionary in Shiagama, and citizens of China, North and South Korea, Taiwan, Pakistan and the Philippines. By 9.30 Coordinated Universal Time on of March, Google Person Finder, which was previously used in the Haitian, Chilean, and Christchurch, New Zealand earthquakes, was collecting information about survivors and their locations. Japanese funerals are normally elaborate Buddhist ceremonies that entail cremation. The thousands of bodies, however, exceeded the capacity of available crematoriums and morgues, many of them damaged, and there were shortages of both kerosene. Each cremation requires 50 liters and dry ice for preservation. The single crematorium in Higashimatsushima, for example, could only handle four bodies a day, although hundreds were found there. Governments and the military were forced to bury many bodies in hastily dug mass graves with rudimentary or no rites, although relatives of the deceased were promised that they would be cremated later. 
Noted individual fatalities within Japan included 104-year-old Takashi Shimokawara, holder of the world athletics records in the men's shot put, discus throw and javelin throw for the over 100s age category. He was killed by the earthquake and tsunami at Kamaishi, Iwate, as of 27 May 2011. Three Japan Ground Self-Defense Force members had died while conducting relief operations in Tohoku. As of March 2012, the Japanese government had recognized 1,331 deaths as indirectly related to the earthquake, such as caused by harsh living conditions after the disaster. As of 30 April 2012, 18 people had died and 420 had been injured while participating in disaster recovery or cleanup efforts. Overseas The tsunami is reported to have caused several deaths outside Japan. One man was killed in Jayapura, Papua, Indonesia after being swept out to sea. A man who is said to have been attempting to photograph the oncoming tsunami at the mouth of the Klamath River, south of Crescent City, California, was swept out to sea. His body was found on 2 April along Ocean Beach in Fort Stevens State Park, Oregon, 330 miles 530 kilometers to the north. <laughs> <laughs> Damage and effects The degree and extent of damage caused by the earthquake and resulting tsunami were enormous, with most of the damage being caused by the tsunami. Video footage of the towns that were worst affected shows little more than piles of rubble, with almost no parts of any structures left standing. Estimates of the cost of the damage range well into the tens of billions of U.S. dollars. Before and after satellite photographs of devastated regions show immense damage to many regions. Although Japan has invested the equivalent of billions of dollars on anti-tsunami seawalls which line at least 40% of its 34,751 kilometers miles coastline and stand up to 12 meters 39 feet high, the tsunami simply washed over the top of some seawalls, collapsing some in the process. Japan's National Police Agency said on 3 April 2011, that 45,700 buildings were destroyed and 144,300 were damaged by the quake and tsunami. The damaged buildings included 29,500 structures in Miyagi Prefecture, 12,500 in Iwate Prefecture and 2,400 in Fukushima Prefecture. 300 hospitals with 20 beds or more in Tohoku were damaged by the disaster, with 11 being completely destroyed. The earthquake and tsunami created an estimated 24 to 25 million tons of rubble and debris in Japan, an estimated 230,000 automobiles and trucks were damaged or destroyed in the disaster. As of the end of May 2011, residents of Iwate, Miyagi, and Fukushima prefectures had requested deregistration of 15,000 vehicles, meaning that the owners of those vehicles were writing them off as unrepairable or unsalvageable. <laughs> Ports All of Japan's ports were briefly shut down after the earthquake, though the ones in Tokyo and southwards soon reopened. Fifteen ports were located in the disaster zone. The northeastern ports of Hachinohe, Sendai, Ishinomaki and Onohama were destroyed, while the port of Chiba which serves the hydrocarbon industry and Japan's ninth-largest container port at Kashima were also affected, though less severely. The ports at Hitachinaka, Hitachi, Soma, Shiagama, Keisanuma, Ofunato, Kamashi and Miyako were also damaged and closed to ships. All 15 ports reopened to limited ship traffic by 29 March 2011. A total of 319 fishing ports, about 10% of Japan's fishing ports, were damaged in the disaster. 
Most were restored to operating condition by the 18th of April 2012. The port of Tokyo suffered slight damage. The effects of the quake included visible smoke rising from a building in the port with parts of the port areas being flooded, including soil liquefaction in Tokyo Disneyland's parking lot. Topic. Dams and water problems The Fujinuma Irrigation Dam in Tsukagawa ruptured, causing flooding and the washing away of five homes. Eight people were missing and four bodies were discovered by the morning. Reportedly, some locals had attempted to repair leaks in the dam before it completely failed. On 12 March 252 dams were inspected and it was discovered that six embankment dams had shallow cracks on their crests. The reservoir at one concrete gravity dam suffered a small non-serious slope failure. All damaged dams are functioning with no problems. Four dams within the quake area were unreachable. When the roads clear, experts will be dispatched to conduct further investigations. In the immediate aftermath of the calamity, at least 1.5 million households were reported to have lost access to water supplies. By the 21st of March 2011, this number fell to 1.04 million. Topic: <inaudible> Electricity. <inaudible> <inaudible> According to the Japanese Trade Ministry, around 4.4 million households served by Tohoku Electric Power TEP in northeastern Japan were left without electricity. Several nuclear and conventional power plants went offline after the earthquake, reducing the Tokyo Electric Power Company's TEPCO total capacity by 21 gigawatts. Rolling blackouts began on 14 March due to power shortages caused by the earthquake. TEPCO, which normally provides approximately 40 gigawatts of electricity, announced that it could only provide about 30 gigawatts, because 40% of the electricity used in the greater Tokyo area was supplied by reactors in the Niigata and Fukushima prefectures. The reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi and Fukushima Daini plants were automatically taken offline when the first earthquake occurred and sustained major damage from the earthquake and subsequent tsunami. Rolling blackouts of approximately three hours were experienced throughout April and May while TEPCO scrambled to find a temporary power solution. The blackouts affected Tokyo, Kanagawa, eastern Shizuoka, Yamanashi, Chiba, Ibaraki, Saitama, Tochigi, and Gunma prefectures. Voluntary reductions in electricity use by consumers in the Kanto area helped reduce the predicted frequency and duration of the blackouts. By 21 March 2011, the number of households in the north without electricity fell to 242,927. Tohoku Electric Power was not able to provide the Kanto region with additional power because TEP's power plants were also damaged in the earthquake. Kansai Electric Power Company Kepco could not share electricity, because its system operated at 60 Hz, whereas TEPCO and TEP operate their systems at 50 Hz. The disparity is due to early industrial and infrastructure development in the 1880s that left Japan without a unified national power grid. Two substations, one in Shizuoka Prefecture and one in Nagano Prefecture, were able to convert between frequencies and transfer electricity from Kansai to Kanto and Tohoku, but their capacity was limited to 1 gigawatt. With damage to so many power plants, it was feared it might be years before a long term solution could be found. To help alleviate the shortage, three steel manufacturers in the Kanto region contributed electricity produced by their in house conventional power stations to TEPCO for distribution to the general public. Sumitomo Metal Industries could produce up to 500 megawatts, JFE Steel 400 megawatts, and Nippon Steel 500 megawatts of electric power auto and auto parts makers in Kanto and Tohoku agreed in May 2011 to operate their factories on Saturdays and Sundays and close on Thursdays and Fridays to help alleviate electricity shortages during the summer of 2011. 
The public and other companies were also encouraged to conserve electricity in the 2011 summer months Setsudan. .The expected electricity crisis in 2011 summer was successfully prevented thanks to all the Setsudan measures. Peak electricity consumption recorded by TEPCO during the period was 49.22 GW, which is 10.77 GW lower than the peak consumption in the previous year. Overall electricity consumption during July and August was also 14% less than in the previous year. The peak electricity consumption within TEP's area was 12.46 gigawatts during the 2011 summer, 3.11 gigawatts, 20% less than the peak consumption in the previous year, and the overall consumption have been reduced by 11% in July with 17% in August compared to previous year. Japanese government continued to ask the public to conserve electricity for several years until year 2016, when it predicted that the supply will be sufficient to meet demand, thanks to the deepening of the mindset to conserve electricity among corporate and general public, addition of new electricity providers due to the electricity liberalization policy, increased output from renewable energy as well as fossil fuel power stations, as well as sharing of electricity between different electricity electricity companies. Topic oil, gas and coal A 220,000 barrel 35,000 cubic meters per day oil refinery of Cosmo Oil Company was set on fire by the quake at Ichihara, Chiba Prefecture, to the east of Tokyo. It was extinguished after 10 days, injuring six people, and destroying storage tanks. Others halted production due to safety checks and power loss. In Sendai, a 145,000-barrel per day refinery owned by the largest refiner in Japan, JX Nippon Oil & Energy, was also set ablaze by the quake. Workers were evacuated, but tsunami warnings hindered efforts to extinguish the fire until 14 March, when officials planned to do so. An analyst estimates that consumption of various types of oil may increase by as much as 300,000 barrels cubic meters per day as well as LNG, as backup power plants burning fossil fuels try to compensate for the loss of 11 gigawatts of Japan's nuclear power capacity. The city owned plant for importing liquefied natural gas in Sendai was severely damaged, and supplies were halted for at least a month. In addition to refining and storage, several power plants were damaged. These include Sendai No. 4, New Sendai No. 1 and No. 2, Haranomashi No. 1 and No. 2, Hirono No. 2 and No. 4 and Hitachinaka No. 1. Nuclear power plants The Fukushima Daiichi, Fukushima Daini, Onagawa Nuclear Power Plant and Tokai Nuclear Power Stations, consisting of a total 11 reactors, were automatically shut down following the earthquake. Higashidori, also on the northeast coast, was already shut down for a periodic inspection. Cooling is needed to remove decay heat after a Generation 2 reactor has been shut down, and to maintain spent fuel pools. The backup cooling process is powered by emergency diesel generators at the plants and at Rakasho Nuclear Reprocessing Plant. At Fukushima Daiichi and Daini, tsunami waves overtopped seawalls and destroyed diesel backup power systems, leading to severe problems at Fukushima Daiichi, including three large explosions and radioactive leakage. Subsequent analysis found that many Japanese nuclear plants, including Fukushima Daiichi, were not adequately protected against tsunamis. Over 200,000 people were evacuated. The aftershock on the 7th of April caused the loss of external power to Rakasho Reprocessing Plant and Higashidori Nuclear Power Plant, but backup generators were functional. Onagawa Nuclear Power Plant lost three of its four external power lines and temporarily lost cooling function in its spent fuel pools for 20 to 80 minutes. A spill of up to 3.8 liters. 
of radioactive water also occurred at Onagawa following the aftershock. A report by the IAEA in 2012 found that the Onagawa nuclear power plant, the closest nuclear plant to the epicenter of the 2011 earthquake and tsunami, had remained largely undamaged. The plant's three reactors automatically shut down without damage and all safety systems functioned as designed. The plant's 14-meter-high seawall successfully withstood the tsunami. The Energy Commissioner of the European Union Gunther Oettinger addressed the European Parliament on 15 March, explaining that the nuclear disaster was an apocalypse. As the nuclear crisis entered a second month, experts said that Fukushima Daiichi, while not the worst nuclear accident ever, was the most complicated. It was not as bad as the Chernobyl disaster, but worse than the Three Mile Island accident. It could take months or years to learn how damaging the release of dangerous isotopes has been to human health and food supplies, and to the surrounding countryside. Later analysis indicated three reactors at Fukushima I units 1, 2, and 3 had suffered meltdowns and continued to leak coolant water. By summer the Vice Minister for Economy, Trade and Industry, the head of the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency, and the head of the Agency for Natural Resources and Energy had all lost their jobs. In 2013, only two nuclear reactors in Japan had been restarted since the 2011 shutdowns. In February 2019, there were 42 operable reactors in Japan. Of these, only nine reactors in five power plants were operating after having been restarted post-2011. <inaudible> Fukushima meltdowns Japan declared a state of emergency following the failure of the cooling system at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, resulting in the evacuation of nearby residents. Officials from the Japanese Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency reported that radiation levels inside the plant were up to 1,000 times normal levels, and that radiation levels outside the plant were up to 8 times normal levels. Later, a state of emergency was also declared at the Fukushima Daini nuclear power plant about 11 kilometers miles south. This brought the total number of problematic reactors to six. Radioactive iodine was detected in the tap water in Fukushima, Tochigi, Gunma, Tokyo, Chiba, Saitama, and Niigata, and radioactive cesium in the tap water in Fukushima, Tochigi, and Gunma. Radioactive cesium, iodine, and strontium were also detected in the soil in some places in Fukushima. There may be a need to replace the contaminated soil. Many radioactive hotspots were found outside the evacuation zone, including Tokyo. Food products were also found contaminated by radioactive matter in several places in Japan. On 5 April 2011, the government of the Ibaraki Prefecture banned the fishing of sand lance after discovering that this species was contaminated by radioactive cesium above legal limits. As late as July 2013 slightly elevated levels of radioactivity were found in beef on sale at Tokyo markets. <inaudible> <inaudible> Incidents elsewhere A fire occurred in the turbine section of the Onagawa nuclear power plant following the earthquake. The blaze was in a building housing the turbine, which is sited separately from the plant's reactor, and was soon extinguished. The plant was shut down as a precaution. On 13 March the lowest level state of emergency was declared regarding the Onagawa plant as radioactivity readings temporarily exceeded allowed levels in the area of the plant. Tohoku Electric Power Co. stated this may have been due to radiation from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accidents but was not from the Onagawa plant itself. As a result of the 7th of April aftershock, Onagawa nuclear power plant lost three of four external power lines and lost cooling function for as much as 80 minutes. A spill of a couple of liters of radioactive water occurred at Onagawa. The number two reactor at Tokai Nuclear Power Plant was shut down automatically. 
On 14 March it was reported that a cooling system pump for this reactor had stopped working, however, the Japan Atomic Power Company stated that there was a second operational pump sustaining the cooling systems, but that two of three diesel generators used to power the cooling system were out of order. <laughs> Wind power None of Japan's commercial wind turbines, totaling over 2,300 megawatts in nameplate capacity, failed as a result of the earthquake and tsunami, including the Kamisu offshore wind farm directly hit by the tsunami. Transport Japan's transport network suffered severe disruptions. Many sections of Tohoku Expressway serving northern Japan were damaged. The expressway did not reopen to general public use until 24 March 2011. All railway services were suspended in Tokyo, with an estimated 20,000 people stranded at major stations across the city. In the hours after the earthquake, some train services were resumed. Most Tokyo area train lines resumed full service by the next day. The 12th of March. 20,000 stranded visitors spent the night of 11 to 12 March inside Tokyo Disneyland. A tsunami wave flooded Sendai Airport at 15:55 JST, about one hour after the initial quake, causing severe damage. Narita and Haneda Airport both briefly suspended operations after the quake, but suffered little damage and reopened within 24 hours. Eleven airliners bound for Narita were diverted to nearby Yokota Air Base. Various train services around Japan were also cancelled, with Junior East suspending all services for the rest of the day. Four trains on coastal lines were reported as being out of contact with operators, one, a four-car train on the Senseki line, was found to have derailed, and its occupants were rescued shortly after 8 a.m. the next morning. Minami Kaisenuma Station on the Kaisenuma Line was obliterated save for its platform, 62 of 70 31 of 35 Junior East train lines suffered damage to some degree. In the worst hit areas, 23 stations on seven lines were washed away, with damage or loss of track in 680 locations and the 30 km radius around the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant unable to be assessed. There were no derailments of Shinkansen bullet train services in and out of Tokyo, but their services were also suspended. The Takedo Shinkansen resumed limited service late in the day and was back to its normal schedule by the next day, while the Joetsu and Nagano Shinkansen resumed services late on 12 March. Services on Yamagata Shinkansen resumed with limited numbers of trains on 31 March. Derailments were minimized because of an early warning system that detected the earthquake before it struck. The system automatically stopped all high speed trains, which minimized the damage. The Tohoku Shinkansen line was worst hit, with Junior East estimating that 1,100 sections of the line, varying from collapsed station roofs to bent power pylons, will need repairs. Services on the Tohoku Shinkansen partially resumed only in Kanto area on 15 March, with one round-trip service per hour between Tokyo and Nasu Shiobara, and Tohoku area service partially resumed on of March between Morioka and Shin Aomori. Services on Akita Shinkansen resumed with limited numbers of trains on 18 March. Service between Tokyo and Shin Aomori was restored by May, but at lower speeds due to ongoing restoration work. The pre earthquake timetable was not reinstated until late September. The rolling blackouts brought on by the crises at the nuclear power plants in Fukushima had a profound effect on the rail networks around Tokyo starting on 14 March. Major railways began running trains at 10 to 20 minute intervals, rather than the usual 3 to 5 minute intervals, operating some lines only at rush hour and completely shutting down others, notably, the Takedo Main Line, Yokosuka Line, Sobu Main Line and Chuo Sobu Line were all stopped for the day. 
This led to near paralysis within the capital, with long lines at train stations and many people unable to come to work or get home. Railway operators gradually increased capacity over the next few days, until running at approximately 80% capacity by 17 March and relieving the worst of the passenger congestion. Topic telecommunications Cellular and landline phone service suffered major disruptions in the affected area. Immediately after the earthquake cellular communication was jammed across much of Japan due to a surge of network activity. On the day of the quake, American broadcaster NPR was unable to reach anyone in Sendai with working phone or internet. Internet services were largely unaffected in areas where basic infrastructure remained, despite the earthquake having damaged portions of several undersea cable systems landing in the affected regions, these systems were able to reroute around affected segments onto redundant links. Within Japan, only a few websites were initially unreachable. Several Wi-Fi hotspot providers reacted to the quake by providing free access to their networks, and some American telecommunications and VoIP companies such as AT&T, Sprint, Verizon, T-Mobile and VoIP companies such as Netalk and Vonage have offered free calls to and in some cases, from Japan for a limited time, as did Germany's Deutsche Telekom. Defense Matsushima Air Field of the Japan Self-Defense Force in Miyagi Prefecture was struck by the tsunami, flooding the base and resulting in damage to all 18 Mitsubishi F-2 fighter jets of the 21st Fighter Training Squadron. Twelve of the aircraft were scrapped, while the remaining six were slated for repair at a cost of 80 billion yen $1 billion, exceeding the original cost of the aircraft. <laughs> <laughs> Space Center JAXA Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency evacuated the Tsukuba Space Center in Tsukuba, Ibaraki. The center, which houses a control room for part of the International Space Station, was shut down and some damage was reported. The Tsukuba Control Center resumed full operations for the space station's Kibo Laboratory and the HTV cargo craft on 21 March 2011. Topic. Cultural properties 754 cultural properties were damaged across 19 prefectures, including five national treasures at Zuigan-ji, Osaki Hachiman-gu, Shiramizu Amidado, and Seihaku-ji. 160 important cultural properties including at Sendai Toshogu, the Kodokan, and Entsu Inn, with its western decorative motifs. 144 monuments of Japan including Matsushima, Takata Matsubara, Yubakan, and the site of Tagaho, six groups of traditional buildings, and four important tangible folk cultural properties. Stone monuments at the UNESCO World Heritage Site, shrines and temples of Nikko were toppled. In Tokyo, there was damage to Koishikawa Korakuen, Rikujin, Hamariku Anshi Tien, and the walls of Edo Castle. Information on the condition of collections held by museums, libraries and archives is still incomplete. There was no damage to the historic monuments and sites of Hiraizumi in Iwate Prefecture, and the recommendation for their inscription on the UNESCO World Heritage List in June was seized upon as a symbol of international recognition and recovery. <laughs> Aftermath The aftermath of the earthquake and tsunami included both a humanitarian crisis and a major economic impact. The tsunami resulted in over 340,000 displaced people in the Tohoku region, and shortages of food, water, shelter, medicine, and fuel for survivors. In response the Japanese government mobilized the self-defense forces under Joint Task Force, Tohoku, led by Lieutenant General Eiji Kimizuka, while many countries sent search and rescue teams to help search for survivors. 
Aid organizations both in Japan and worldwide also responded, with the Japanese Red Cross reporting $1 billion in donations. The economic impact included both immediate problems, with industrial production suspended in many factories, and the longer-term issue of the cost of rebuilding which has been estimated at 10 trillion yen $122 billion. In comparison to the 1995 Great Hanshin earthquake, the East Japan earthquake brought serious damage to an extremely wide range. The aftermath of the twin disasters also left Japan's coastal cities and towns with nearly 25 million tons of debris. In Ishinomaki alone, there were 17 trash collection sites 180 meters 590 feet long and at least 4.5 meters 15 feet high. An official in the city's government trash disposal department estimated that it would take three years to empty these sites. In April 2015, authorities off the coast of Oregon discovered debris that is thought to be from a boat destroyed during the tsunami. Cargo contained yellowtail jackfish, a species that lives off the coast of Japan, still alive. KGW estimates that more than one million ton of debris still remain in the Pacific Ocean. Topic. Humanitarian response According to Japan's foreign ministry, 116 countries and 28 international organizations offered assistance. Japan specifically requested assistance from teams from Australia, New Zealand, South Korea, and the United States. Topic. Media coverage Japan's national public broadcaster, NHK, and Japan Satellite Television suspended their usual programming to provide ongoing coverage of the situation. Other nationwide Japanese and international TV networks also broadcast uninterrupted coverage of the disaster. Ustream Asia broadcast live feeds of NHK, Tokyo Broadcasting System, Nippon TV, Fuji TV, TV Asahi, TV Tokyo, Tokyo MX, TV Kanagawa, and CNN on the Internet starting on 12 March 2011. Yokozwanus, an internet webcast in Japan, dedicated its broadcast to the latest news gathered from Japanese news stations, translating them in real time to English. It was noted that the Japanese news media has been at times overly cautious to avoid panic and reliance on confusing statements by experts and officials. In this national crisis, the Japanese government provided Japanese Sign Language (JSL) interpreting at the press conferences related to the Earth earthquake and tsunami. Television broadcasts of the press conferences of Prime Minister Naoto Kan and Chief Cabinet Secretary Yukio Adano included simultaneous JSL interpreters standing next to the Japanese flag on the same platform. According to Jake Adelstein, most Japanese media accepted and parroted the misinformation put out by the Japanese government and TEPCO about the unfolding Fukushima nuclear crisis. Notable exceptions, according to Adelstein, were newspapers Sankey Shimbun and Chunichi Shimbun which questioned the accuracy of the information coming from the government and TEPCO. Because of the unquestioning nature of most Japanese media to hold to the party line. Many Japanese mid-level officials and experts spoke to foreign media to get their opinions and observations publicized. Atsushi Funahashi, director of Nuclear Nation notes that when the overseas media was calling Fukushima a meltdown, the Japanese government and media waited two months before admitting it. Nine days after the earthquake hit, a visualization and sonification were uploaded to YouTube allowing listeners to hear the earthquake as it unfolded in time. Two days of seismic activity made available by the IRIS consortium were compressed into two minutes of sound. The large number of views made the video one of the most popular examples of sonification on the web. Also, following the earthquake, for the first time in Japanese history, the emperor addressed the nation in a pre-recorded television broadcast. Topic: 
Scientific and research response Seismologists anticipated a very large quake would strike in the same place as the 1923 Great Kanto earthquake in the Sagami Trough, southwest of Tokyo. The Japanese government had tracked plate movements since 1976 in preparation for the so called Tokai earthquake, predicted to take place in that region. However, occurring as it did 373 kilometers (232 miles) northeast of Tokyo, the Tohoku earthquake came as a surprise to seismologists. While the Japan Trench was known for creating large quakes, it had not been expected to generate quakes above an 8.0 magnitude. The headquarters for earthquake research promotion set up by Japanese government then reassessed the long-term risk of trench-type earthquakes around Japan, and it was announced in November 2011 that research on the 869 Sanriku earthquake indicated that a similar earthquake with a magnitude of MW 8.4 to 9.0 would take place off the Pacific coast of northeastern Japan, on average, every 600 years. Also, a tsunami earthquake with a tsunami magnitude scales MT between 8.6 and 9.0 similar to the 1896 Sanriku earthquake, the mount for the 2011 Tohoku earthquake was 9.1 to 9.4 had a 30% chance to occur within 30 years, the quake gave scientists the opportunity to collect a large amount of data to model the seismic events that took place in great detail. These data are expected to be used in a variety of ways, providing unprecedented information about how buildings respond to shaking, and other effects. Gravimetric data from the quake have been used to create a model for increased warning time compared to seismic models, as gravity fields travel faster than seismic waves. Researchers have also analyzed the economic effects of this earthquake and have developed models of the nationwide propagation via interfirm supply networks of the shock originated in Tohoku region. Researchers soon after the full extent of the disaster was known launched a project to gather all digital material relating to the disaster into an online searchable archive to form the basis of future research into the events during and after the disaster. The Japan Digital Archive is presented in English and Japanese and is hosted at the Reischauer Institute of Japanese Studies at Harvard University in Boston, Massachusetts. Some of the first research to come from the archive was a 2014 paper from the Digital Methods Initiative in Amsterdam about patterns of Twitter usage around the time of the disaster. After the 2011 disaster the UNISDR, United Nations International Strategy for Disaster Reduction, held its World Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction in Tohoku in March 2015, which produced the Sendai Framework document to guide efforts by international development agencies to act before disasters instead of reacting to them after the fact. At this time Japan's Disaster Management Office published a bi-lingual guide in Japanese and English, Disaster Management in Japan, to outline the several varieties of natural disaster and the preparations being made for the eventuality of each. In the fall of 2016 Japan's National Research Institute for Earth Science and Disaster Resilience NEED, Japanese abbreviation, Bosai Kaken, full name Busai Kagaku Gijutsu Kenkyusho launched the online interactive Disaster Chronology Map for Japan, 416-2013. Map labels in Japanese to display in visual form the location, disaster time, and date across the islands. An expedition named Japan Trench Fast Drilling Project have been conducted in year 2012-2013 to drill ocean floor boreholes through the fault zone of the earthquake and gathered important data about the rupture mechanism and physical properties of the fault that caused the huge earthquake in Suanmi which devastated much of northeast Japan. Topic. See also. Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster Health crisis List of earthquakes in 2011 List of earthquakes in Japan List of historical tsunamis Lists of earthquakes 
Map to chronicle all known disasters in Japan from 416-2013 Labels in Japanese Nuclear power in Japan section Seismicity Ryu Un Maru Seismicity of the Sanriku Coast <laughs> Notes <laughs>